Good evening, um, my name is Eric Ariaga, and my topic of discussion today will be um, networking friends. Um, just by a show of hands, how many of you have ever created an, uh, an account on any social networking site? Um, now, look around you, um, keep your hands up, look around you, and kind of keep these number of hands in mind throughout the duration of our <laughs> The internet has become a factor of progression in our society. It has completely revolutionized the way we live, the way we learn, the way we eat, the way we communicate. It is a place where information can be gathered and shared. It is a medium of communication amongst individuals worldwide. Social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, the, line, the list goes on. All have out here each and every one of each and every one of us in some way whether they have distracted us in homework, connected us with an old friend, um, triggered some emotions, or triggered some emotions. I can't recall the number of times Facebook has personally distracted me, um, or the number of times I've seen a peer suffering from the same addiction. Um, I stand in front of you today to discuss the topic of social network insights and how they are detrimental to the development of an individual's character. Social network insights alter an individual's character by reducing one's productivity level, shortening one's attention span, and exposing one to online predators. But my first point, social networking sites can reduce one's productivity level. According to Jeff Bula, 250 million photos are uploaded every day on Facebook alone. Now that's just pictures alone. You can do various things on there, like send messages, um, like other people's statuses, that's just photos alone. It is evident that time and effort from the individual is required to establish these numbers. Millions of people log in every day to these kinds of websites, which can ultimately reduce the rate of productivity. In Sneha, in Sneha Theril's research, she concluded that the productivity level of the majority of people she tested declined. Longer, longer, comp longer, completion, longer completion time of tasks and reduced quality of work resulted from simultaneously using Facebook while doing homework. Second, social networking sites can shorten one's attention span. People are constantly logging in and out of these websites, websites including myself. Um, I, I do have a Twitter account and a Facebook account, so I know what it feels like to kind of have that thought in the back of your mind. Oh, if I just finished my homework, I have like five minutes, I can get, some, get a snack, or oh, I'll check my, my status, or maybe my friend will back, maybe um, my teacher posted something. So that thought is in the back of my mind. Um, it is this redundancy that shortens an, an individual's attention span. By routinely participating in social networking, it could seem like a necessity, um, kind of this, this sense of, oh, I need to check it, rather than I want to check it and I, I'll be fine without it. It becomes a necessity. Um, depending on these sites, depending on these sites to express thoughts or ideas can become compulsory. Baroness Greenfield, an Oxford, an Oxford University neuroscientist and director of the Royal Institution, believes repeated exposure could effectively rewire the brain. Um, third, social networking sites can expose one to online predators. The law states that millions of accounts are created daily on Facebook alone. Because anyone can access a social networking site to create an account, false identities are created daily to cyberbully others. Now, some people create these accounts to maybe stir up some drama with their high school anime or to kind of get back at somebody. Um, and because it's so easy to create an account and because it's the individual that has control of what information you put on there, it kind of makes it ambiguous. Um, this ambiguity, this ambig ambiguity, this ambiguity, and I think can force one to build trust with a complete stranger based off of information that might be censored or false. You don't know who is on the other side of that screen, um, but because there is that that trust and that that communication, can, that communication that's progressing with that person, you can build trust with that person. Um, once the truth is released, trust issues can become evident in the individual and the character can be altered, causing maybe trust issues with other people in your life. Um, this can also ultimately result in self-harm, such as suicide. In the case of Grace McComas, hurtful messages were sent to her online. This resulted in her suicide on Easter Sunday of this year. According to the Baltimore Sun, McComas is one of numerous adolescents 
that go through this. An average of 25 boys and girls ages 15 to 19 committed suicide in Maryland each year from 2005 to 2009 as a result of cyberbullying. Whether social networking sites reduce productivity level, showing attention span, or expose one to online predators, it is evident that, al that the alteration of the character exists as a result. I hope you consider the negative effects of utilizing social networking sites. It is, one, it is one's character that defines who he or she stands to be. Participating in this controversial spectrum of social networking sites has an effect. By exerting my three claims, I hope I have enlightened you to harm. I hope I have enlightened you to the harm that can affect your character, yourself being who you are. All right, the opening is fine, and a little audience survey is not a bad way to get the audience motivated to listen to what you're talking about as well. Uh, you've got a long list of sites that you present at the beginning as well. I, I think the phrasing on your proposition at the beginning is complicated because you start off with a question, and then you basically follow the question with a restatement of the question as your proposition, and it sounds awkward. So I'd get rid of the question and just stick with the claim. And I think you'd be better off that way. You do a nice job previewing what the supporting structure is going to be. It's going to be easy to follow. Internally, I think you did a nice job signposting those. Once in a while, I thought maybe you could have a smoother transition as you were getting to each of those points. It did sometimes feel like we were making a sudden right turn or a sudden left turn uh, when we got to those points. Uh, but I could tell every time where you were in the body of the speech. So I think organizationally, you're in pretty good shape. The evidence, I think you're very dependent on uh, hypothetical examples and personal examples on the first part. You've got the one study that talks about productivity, and I think we need to know a little bit more about that study. There's no statistics presented in it. It's, you just give us the conclusion of the researcher, and it sounds like people who are doing homework and on Facebook at the same time are less productive than they would be anyway. Well, I'm not sure that there's any surprise about that anytime you have uh, a distraction, you know, you're trying to multitask. Obviously Obviously, your productivity level is going to go down. The question is, is that reducing people's effectiveness in schools on a regular basis? You know, if you if you do that uh, an hour a night, well, then for the hour your productivity was low, but does that mean that you are not completing your classes or anything like that? I don't know if there's new data on that or not, but uh, like I said, it seemed to me like that was the strongest evidence that you had on that point, and it wasn't particularly forceful there and everything else was hypothetical examples. I thought you were a little bit better on some of the other points. Um, you know, for instance, you, when you talk about the uh, cyberbullying sort of thing, uh, you've got some examples there, um, and you've got some a statistic there on suicides that are related, at least in Maryland. Uh, the conclusions on where that came from, I don't know. You 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 do you do give a source citation on that. How they connected that to uh, the cyberbullying could probably be explained. Um, so, like I said, I thought the first point was a little bit underwhelming in being convincing. Uh, your third point was a little bit stronger. You're a little inconsistent on your audience contact, although I didn't think that you had that big a problem. You just need to relax a little bit, and you'll be fine. All right. Thank you.